I like this one. Hi there, I'm Tim Clark for PC Gamer, and for the past three months or so, I've been sat on my backside, which is not unusual, but I've been doing it this time for a new hardware guide we just posted on PCGamer.com, uh, which is about chairs. Chairs are a vital part, obviously, of your PC gaming setup. Easy to kind of overlook while you're throwing down the big dollars on your graphics cards and your CPUs, uh, but a crucial part if you want an enjoyable experience. And although I've spent all my life pretty much sat on my backside, I didn't consider myself an expert in what made a good chair. So to find out more about what I should be looking for, I spoke to Melissa Afterman, who's a Senior Principal Ergonomist at VSI Risk Management. Uh, you know much more about what makes a good chair uh, than I do. And when we first spoke, um, what I wanted to know was immediately what kind of price range should I be looking at for a chair for PC gaming? That's right. Well. It depends on what you want to get out of your chair. I think in order to get the right amount of adjustability to fit you and or whoever you are, um, expect to spend three or four hundred dollars. You go on something like Amazon, it's full of kind of budget chairs with all sorts of levers and cranks. And I wanted to know that what, what are the things you really need to look for so that you're going to be able to adjust the chair to make it comfortable and supportive for you? Yeah, it's a good question. So certainly the chair needs to have a height adjustability. It needs to be able to go up and down depending on how tall you are. Um, the armrests also need to be adjustable. If they're fixed height armrests, they're most likely going to be too high or, or too low for you. So having some adjustability in the armrests. And then the next thing I would really make sure you think about is the backrest of the chair. Um, perhaps the height adjustability, so you can make sure that you get a good lumbar support through for your lower back. But even more than that, the ability to recline when you want to or hold yourself in a more upright seated position for you know, maybe traditional computer work um, during your day. And um, when you're kind of dealing with your clients, what are the real no-nos in terms of chairs? Are they kind of ones that like look really stylish, but you, you, you think are terrible? Or if you go for the budget stuff, is it really going to kind of do yourself a mischief? I think the, the, some of the, the very cool looking minimalist designs these days um, just don't have enough um, cushion. So I, I see a lot of hard seat pans or hard backrests and our body it can't tolerate that contact stress, so we need some sort of cushion. I think just making sure that there is some way to adjust the chair so that it fits your body, because no one of us is shaped the same. That's All right, right. well, I'm, I'm gonna bring out some chairs now that, that I kind of picked out as, as ones I thought were really good, and you can tell me if I've got it Fun. right or wrong, I guess. Very good. All right. So the first two chairs I want to look at uh, are both ergonomic task chairs, kind of your sort of special area. What I love about uh, this one, which is the OM5 by Office Master, it's got this, uh, you can't quite see it here, I'm going to spin it around. You've got this curved mechanism in the back which enables the, the backrest to slide back and then the seat pan slide out, which I'm going to demo now. Uh, and it, it felt then that I could really easily transition between sort of typing and, and answering email and then kind of maybe playing something. Yeah, I think one of the nice things about this chair is as you tilt back or go into that recline position, the seat pan comes with you. Yeah. So you have continual support no matter what, what sort of recline you're, or upright position you're in. This isn't a chair with like tons and tons of levers and cranks and, and, and knobs. It's pretty simple. You just adjust the height, you've got the, uh, the armrests and that's kind of it. Yeah. But yeah it, it just seems to work. They've gone that direction and that's, that's what we're seeing a lot with some of the newer designs in task chairs is less levers, less, less knobs just sort of intelligent or intuitive uh, adjustability where it comes with you. Slightly more expensive, the chair I picked out for you is the, uh, the Herman Miller, classic name in, in chair design. This is the Mirror 2. Okay. It's kind of styled um, similar to the Aeron, which is their really iconic design, but it's a, I think this is a slightly higher end model. You can see it's got the double lumbar yeah. support. That's kind of unusual that you can do it side by side. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm not sure that I would recommend you making them uneven. Yeah. Um, I do like this lumbar 
sort of pressure adjustability more than the Aeron. The Aeron had a, a, a pillow that would fall off if, it, if you lifted it up too high, whereas the, this Mira 2 has the nice sort of paddle twisting. And then of course the, the height can go up and down, which is a nice way to position it just right. So another two chairs I picked out in testing, this was actually what became known as the dream chair. It's actually the steel case gesture. It's a thousand dollars and change worth of chair. I, I like it so much I can't wait to, to sit in it again. Uh, you're paying a lot of money for a chair like this. That's right. Justify it for me. Well, uh, the armrests are, on this chair are unique. Crazy. I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, they go anywhere and everywhere and exactly where you want them, at, depending on what you're doing, which is important, I think. Um, I think you pay a lot for that, though. The adjustability of the arms does let you work in different and play in different sort of positions, I yeah, guess. Yeah, absolutely. So we don't... We still work at a PC, we still sit at a traditional desk, but we see more and more that we're working in cafes, in um, open work areas, in different work positions with you know, um, smartphones, tablets, different devices that maybe need to be a little closer to the face. So having an armrest that actually can support the arm in that position to use the device is, is a good thing. One of the things I loved about the back in this one, because it's, it's kind of like the OM5, that you don't have to adjust it a lot, it just naturally reclines and then springs back but it but it doesn't go back just through a curve it also kind of tilts a bit as you do it so you've got that constant movement and that felt like the key I found was that I wanted the back support to be so that even when I was moving around it was still flush to my back and I still felt like I was getting that support. Yeah absolutely I think we're seeing that more and more with the newer designs that are coming out because the research is, is backing that that we need to have that consistent movement support. So one of the other types of chair I wanted to ask you about is, is this kind of model, this kind of bucket racer style seat that people who watch games played on Twitch will be familiar to seeing um, popular streamers use chairs like this. There's another company called DX Racer who, who do a lot of these. I, I was slightly less convinced by this. It felt like a bit odd to me that the, the lumbar cushioning and the headrest was, was separate. What do you make of it? Yes, um, generally we don't, you know, we generally like a, more of a built-in lumbar support. It's just going to be more sustainable and it's going to stay in place longer. This one does um, adjust up and down though, so you can position it right where you need it. Might be a little bit, you know, a little bit bulkier for certain statures, but it does have the adjustability there. <laughs> During the testing for the article, it soon became clear that getting the right chair was just one part of getting your PC gaming setup spot on. So I wanted to ask Melissa, how should I arrange my monitor, mouse and keyboard so that I wasn't doing my back a disservice? Yeah, it's, that's a very important question. I'm glad you're talking about that because you can spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars on a chair, but if you don't use it properly, it's not gonna do you any good. It's just like sitting on a, on a box. So the important thing is to be able to actually use that nice backrest and sit back in the chair. And the only way to be able to do that is to bring the tools close to you. So we'll get there in a minute, but first let's make sure the chair's height is adjusted properly. So we wanna adjust the chair height so that your knees are at about 90 degrees or that your elbows are in line with the desk. So you need to come up just a little bit more if you can. Yep, very good. All right, that's very good. So as you're sitting back in the chair, we see your elbows right in line with the desk. Fantastic, very good. We need you to sit close enough or so that you can be close enough to the keyboard to keep the elbow near the side of the body. You never wanna reach the arms too far forward because that puts strain on the upper back. So keyboard forward? Bring the keyboard a little closer to you. Yeah, that's right. Very good. And then the mouse should always be right next to the keyboard, as, as close to your body as you can, again, so you're not reaching forward or reaching out to the side. How, how high should my eye line be versus the monitor? It, it kind of depends on the size of the monitor, but a, a larger monitor can tend to be a little bit higher than a, than a more traditional size. But in general, you want your eyebrows to be within the top third of the screen or so. Okay. So actually, we're looking pretty good right that's now. Right. Yeah, any higher than this, though, and you're going to end up tilting your chin up, and that's going to put strain on your neck. So that about wraps up our look at recommending chairs for your PC gaming setup. I want to thank Melissa Afterman for coming to be our expert guide. My pleasure. Just to recap, you're looking for probably then $300 up for a decent ergonomic task chair. That sounds about right. Plenty of lower back support, movement, a seat pan that moves, adjustable arms, mm -hmm. and crucial to get your workstation set up, both for, for office stuff and for gaming. You got it. Cool. Well, this is a subject I think we're going to revisit more. We're looking forward to seeing what feedback we get from you guys. If you've got kind of like the unicorn dream chair out there, I want to hear about it. So let us know in the comments.
Hey everybody, Tom and Evan here with the Q&A portion of the PC Gamer Show. This week we took some questions from our Steam group, so let's jump right in. The first question is from The Dingo Trademark. Very specific about that. How do you guys feel about survival games? It seems as though so many of them are coming through early access and not holding up on their end of the bargain. Is this market a bit oversaturated? Um, I feel like a little bit of yes, but you can't really limit games not living up to their part of the agreement in early access just to survival games. I think that's a problem with early access games in general. What do you think? Like, do you think it's oversaturated? Do you think there are too many survival games? Personally, it's a genre I love. I mean, I think there's a lot to explore there, right? I mean, it's a genre that naturally lends itself to the sandbox. The problem that we're seeing is, I mean, DayZ and, and a couple other games kind of set this template of, well, it, it should be an, an early access game just because it can, because it lends itself to, you're adding in systems very modularly over time. I think, you know, I just love to see someone take a longer time scale for it, take three years and just do something really com complete. I think they're very afraid that they're gonna miss a trend when in actuality, I think survival games are going to stick around for a long time, especially as like end game engines get higher fidelity, you know, more, they can accommodate more people, internet connections get better. So I don't think the survival genre is going anywhere, personally. I'm sick of zombies when it comes to survival, but yeah, I agree. I think survival is, is kind of a great new genre that's not as, as wizened and old as like the standard RPG, and I hope it sticks around for sure. Yeah. So, second question here from JWG, again from our Steam group, which you should join if you haven't already. JWG asks, are you hoping for a Fallout 4 at the upcoming E3? If not, what would you want from Bethesda? So yeah, interesting news this week. Bethesda's doing its first press conference at E3 2015, that's in June. A lot of people warning about Fallout 4. I think it's very possible. I mean, for Bethesda to set aside time to do its own event, it's gotta be something major. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, and kind of devil's advocate argument, I'm actually hoping that they announce something new. I think, you know, Bethesda's extremely talented. Again, we're talking about sandbox games. They're one of the best in the business at make, making that kind of game, rolling RPG stuff into it, really interesting combat systems that are turn-based and sort of hybrid real-time in there. They're really good at that stuff. I just wanna see them, you know, feel like they can break away from just doing another Fallout, another Skyrim, none of this, like, they have a ton of talent. Yeah, I think, I completely agree. I think that probably a Fallout 4 is more likely of an announcement than some new IP, unfortunately, but I agree. Maybe, maybe they'll be the company to say what you suggested, which is, you know, spending three years on a big survival game. Maybe they're gonna branch out into that, because if you think about it, Fallout is, the same kind of uh, style almost, just without the survival aspects of it. Yeah, and we love Fallout, but what's left to explore in that universe? Like, mm -hmm. they bring it to another town, another setting that has its own theme. Maybe it's in Europe, maybe it's like more Soviet. Another destroyed rubble of a city. But ultimately it's, uh, you know, I sort of roll my eyes when, when people are rehashing the same stuff for the third or fourth time. We're getting literally to that number, so. Yeah. We'll see, I, I want it, but I hope they do something original with it if they do. And our last question, also from Steam, comes from Ann Her. With the new consoles, PS4 and Xbox One, already getting a little bit outdated, do you guys think more developers will refocus more to PC gaming? Uh, I, my answer to that is I always hope so, but I mean, consoles get outdated every generation, right? That's what consoles do, is they have this half decade to a decade lifespan and then they start to fall back and PC kind of reigns in that time and then a new console generation comes out. Uh, I think that developers are focusing more on PC nowadays just in general. And I think that's a really nice and encouraging trend. Uh, I'm not sure if it correlates exactly to the outdated hardware, but I hope so. I hope more developers get on that train. Yeah, I think we'll see many more games go multi-platform. Uh, you can look at Smite, for example, from High res down in Georgia, another Georgia developer, Tripwire, releasing Killing Floor 2 on PlayStation. It, it's such an easier proposition for those folks to release it on all platforms. It takes like 10% more work and they get to make a bunch more money, but everybody benefits. Mm -hmm. And in, in those two cases, like they're still PC first, they're still totally PC focused, but we get a better, higher quality game, a more expensive game because it's releasing on multiple platforms. So I think I think we'll just see stuff release everywhere because it's become a lot easier because the architecture of those systems is much closer to you know, what we have on PC. Yeah, last year we saw a lot of developers say, hey, we should start making PC games and then have a lot of disastrous buggy ports. So I'm hoping this year is the year that they say, hey, we should make our PC games on PC well and finished when they come out, but we'll see. 
Thanks so much for your questions. Be sure to tune in next week and follow us on Facebook and Twitter and join our Steam group. You can use the hashtag AskPCGamer and we'll try to answer any of your questions on next week's show. So see you then.